My name is Dustin Madison, a blogger on the Canaxis Supply Chain Experts community. Supply chain risk management is a topic I have covered in my previous interviews. However, the recent earthquakes in Japan and New Zealand have sparked heightened interest in risk management among supply chain professionals. The purpose of this post and video is to challenge the thinking of supply chain professionals with the use of some data and a model that I uncovered from the NASA website. If it were possible to predict when the next supply chain super risks would take place, would you take action to mitigate the risk? Looking at the NASA mathematical model of comet Elenin, it is clear that a comet or perhaps a planet has already penetrated the solar system and is on a path towards the Earth. It is expected to come close to the Earth in the fall of 2011. What we do not know is the size and mass of, of comet Elenin. Elenin is pre presently being tracked as it goes through the asteroid belt on its way into the inner solar system. It is expected to do a hard turn around the Sun like any comet would, crossing and coming in, be in between Mercury and Venus before starting its journey back out. On its way out it will cross over, cross our bow, meaning it will pass very close to the Earth and the Earth will pass behind it, plowing into its tail. In this video you will see, explained graphically, you will see the mathematical precision that every time this celestial body comes into alignment with the Earth and the Sun, we have a huge earthquake. The last three alignments produced the Japanese 9.0 quake, the one in New Zealand and before that the one in Chile. On March 11th, Elenin was much further out. When the next alignment happens, it will be devastatingly close. The main point to understand is that if Elenin was just a normal comet, it would not have the mass to generate gravity pull that would affect the Earth when the Earth swings around into alignment. I'm going to look at March 15th as the starting date um, and show what that reveals um, in the past. Uh, after March 15th, I will show you from the NASA mathematical model of the comet Elenin, I will show you the um, further dates such as, I'll show you September 4th, 2010, going back in time, then February 27th, 2010, September 27th in the future, this year, 2011, and then I'll look into <clears throat> October 17th, 2011 as the next important date, followed by November 5th, 2011, and then November 23rd, 2011. So what we're going to do is look at this particular model which comes from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory of NASA. This is March 15th, 2011. Assuming the data is correct, let's take a look. If we spin this model, this model can be spun and seen in different angles. But what you can see is that if you look at the um, Elenin, which is uh, the right here in blue, it's actually on March 15th, 2011, Elenin is, was in alignment with the Earth and the Sun. And if you look at this, uh, March, on this date, we were, this uh, Elenin is 2.101 AU from the Earth. That was the distance. Some people are calling this a dwarf star rather than a comet. Uh, one of the questions is how large is this object uh, which would impact the magnetic fields between the planets. So we're putting a lot of stress on the Earth because it is in between Elenin and the Sun. It was no wonder there was an earthquake a few days prior on March 11, 2011 in Japan. This registered as a 9.0. <laughs> now let's take this model into the past. I went uh, to September 4, 2010. And as you see, as you can see here, we have our Earth and we have the Sun in alignment and we have Elenin. So Elenin, Earth and the Sun are in alignment on this date and we're on the far side of the Sun for this and Elenin is pulling on us and the Sun is also pulling on us. And we also have Mercury in there. Venus is also very close. So everything is sort of packed together. So September 4th, 2010 was the date of the earthquake in New Zealand. It was a 7.2 quake. If Elenin is just a comet, do you think it could pull on our Earth hard enough to create an earthquake in this alignment? If we go back again to the date February 27th, 2010, you can see that Elenin is lined up with the Earth and the Sun. So it is possible this is creating a strong pull due to the magnetic forces of the planets.
However, if you look at alanine, at this time it was 6.0, 6 6.06 AU from the Earth. That's six times the distance that we are from the Sun. February 27, 2010 was the date of the 8.8 .8 earthquake in Chile. Now let's take a look into the future to see what might happen. Uh, let's go to September 25th, 2011. Here's the February 27th image to be more accurate. The image previously was for February 25th, but this is February 27th, 2010 and showing the alignment of Elena with the Earth and the Sun. So let's take a look at this model into the future, September 26, 2011. At this time, Elenin will happen to be on the inside of us. Here's the Earth, and Elenin is inside, of, or inside. And we see that Mercury is almost in alignment with the Sun. So we have Elenin inside Venus's orbit, and you have the Earth, and, we're, and the Earth, Elenin, and the, and the Sun are lined up again. There may be some strong, strong pulling on the Earth, Look how far Elenin will be from us, only 0.396 AU. Okay, let's look, let's take a look at October 17th, 2011. At this date, Elenin is, is the closest it will get to the Earth, at only, at very close, 0 0.232 AU. It will almost be in our orbit line. If we take a look at November 5, 2011, the Earth crosses the path of Elenin, however they're not in direct alignment with the Sun. It is theorized at this time there could be a lot of debris left over which the Earth may run into. Now let's go to November 23, 2011. We see another alignment date where you have Elenin in alignment with the Earth and the Sun. This is similar to what happened with the earthquake in Chile and Japan. However, this time the distance is only 0.056 AU as opposed to about 6 AU.